I want to deal with one of these pathologies called the rise of the state. And in order to do that, I want to take you back for a minute to our third tour and answering the question, who is man? Do you remember at that time we took a look at Maslow and we took a look at Rogers in their statement about who man is? Basically, good and perfectible. That brought us to this issue, why is there evil in the world? Rogers says, experience leads me to believe that it is cultural influences which are the major factor in our evil behaviors. Maslow then said, sick people are made by a sick culture. Healthy people are made possible by a healthy culture. What did that lead us to in terms of um, a humanistic view of man? Basically good and perfectible. Mental health can be attained by getting in touch with yourself, self-actualization. But it was the social institutions that were the problem. Social institutions are responsible for man's evil actions. And that is why we have the kind of social actions that we have today. Because as soon as the state begins to believe that it has the right and the obligation, if these are the problems, we will invest power in this institution to help gain control of those institutions which are causing the evil in society. And the state then begins to rise in power and begin to think that it does have the right to breach the sovereign boundaries of each of those spheres. Sphere sovereignty is gone, and we have the rise of the state. And when the state begins to rise in power, it no longer observes any kind of sphere sovereignty at all, but begins to assume that it has the right to absorb all of those institutions underneath its control and power. And that then brings us to a great conflict. What is the conflict? What is the problem? It ends up being an ethical problem. The biblical point is not that our problem ultimately is an intellectual one. It's a moral one. That's why we appeal for relativism. Because if there, if there is no objective truth, if there are no objective standards, then it's okay for me to live however I want to live, according to my preferences. But if there is a God, and He's normative, and He has a law, then He says no when I want to say yes, and I have a conflict. If I could just get rid of objective truth, get rid of objective reality, then I can live however I want to live. If I can just get rid of objective truth, then I can live however I want to live. What is the conflict here? What is the problem? What do we need to get rid of? God. God. He becomes the problem. When the state begins to rise in power, his restrictions, his ethical notions now become the problem. And we need to remove him. Now, you know you can't remove him, but the state will begin to act as if he is no longer there. And when the state begins to act as if he is no longer there, then we begin to view the state in a little different way. Look at Hegel's comment about the state. The universal is to be found in the state. The state is the divine ideas that exists on earth. We must therefore worship the state as the manifestation of the divine on earth and consider that if it is difficult to comprehend nature, it is harder to grasp the essence of the state. The state is the march of God through the world. Now, I would submit to you that that is exactly what is going on. Now, we don't bow down to some statue, but we begin to act as if it is God. And we change the sphere of God and man now to state and man. That the state becomes that which we turn to, to answer all of our problems. The state begins to assume that it has the right over all education. It begins to assume it has the responsibility for the poor. The state begins to assume that all ethics now are bound up in the state's declaration of what is right and wrong. It assumes it will take care of the needy, of course, using your goods to do it. It will determine what wages can be paid 
and it will determine what marriage looks like, and on and on it goes. The state rising up and assuming authority and power destroys these institutions.